Hi there. In this video, I'll explain how to install RSpec and how to structure an RSpec test. The majority of this tutorial is about testing Rails applications, but in this video, I'll focus solely on RSpec. Now, if you get stuck at any point, there is a link in the description for the text version of this tutorial, and there's a link to download code samples. Let's get started. First, we need to install RSpec. The best way to do that is using a gem file, just like any other gem. I'm assuming you already know how to install RSpec and use Bundler. If not, I recommend Googling around RVM and Bundler. So let's open the terminal and I'll create a new project called installation and structure and I'll change into that directory. Inside, I will create a gem file. And if I open this in VS Code, and I'll open the gem file, inside I'll add the source for uh, RubyGems. So that's HTTPS rubygems.org and I will add RSpec. I'll save the file. And the other thing I need to do is add a new file to specify the Ruby version I want to use. I'm using RBM, so I can just create a .ruby version file and I'll specify 3.1 point, sorry, 3.1.2, which is the latest Ruby version at the moment. With those two files, I can jump back over to the terminal and run bundle install. And this will go ahead and install RSpec from RubyGems. Now that we have RSpec installed, we can start writing some tests to learn the syntax and structure of RSpec. All RSpec tests live inside the spec directory. I'll create that now. And inside, I'll add our first test. Let's call it main spec rb. All our spec test files have to end in underscore spec. If not, they will be completely ignored by rspec. Hence the name main underscore rspec dot rb. Now let's go and open this file in VS code and let's add some code. I'm going to add a simple test case to assert that one plus one equals two. And the way I do that in our spec is by writing an expectation. So I can say expect one plus one to equal two. To make it a valid test though, I need to wrap it in a few structures. I need an it block, and this it block can have a test description. So I'll say it adds two numbers. And I also need a describe block at the top. So I can say describe addition. And let's not worry about the what the describe block and the it block do too much at this point. I'll uh, come back and explain that later. But if I save this file and jump over to the terminal, I should be able to run the specs with bundle exec rspec. And, oh, there must be an error there. Let's have a look and, ah, oh, so I created main spec, but it's actually outside of the spec directory. So if I just move that in, so that our spec can actually find the test. Let me rerun this. There we go. I have uh, one example, zero failures. So you can see now that our spec is running this expectation and it's passing because one plus one does equal two. 
Now that we've installed our spec, written a test and executed a test, let's review the structure of a test in more detail. Keep in mind, our spec has its own DSL language, that's domain specific language, which means our spec code is all valid Ruby, but sometimes it can feel like a different programming language altogether. The first important structure is the describe block. Everything in our spec is defined within an R spec describe block. Typically you'd have one describe block per Ruby class. And let's walk through an example of that. I'll add a user class to the project. So that'll be just user RB at the root level. And for now that will just be an empty class. The associated test would be uh, user underscore spec RB. So let's create that now inside the spec directory. User spec RB. And this spec file would have a describe block which looks like this. A describe block is only for structuring tests. You can't write expectations within describe blocks directly. In order to do that, we need a second structure, and that's called an it block. Now, the phrase it block might sound strange, but it makes sense when you start using it frequently and you start talking about tests. Here's how they look in practice. You might have it creates a database record. You might have it updates the inventory count. You might have it disables the user. As you can see, test descriptions should be written from the perspective of the thing being tested. And then inside the actual it block itself, you'd have an expectation. So expect blah, blah, blah. Let's delete these examples and walk through a more realistic one. Imagine we want to test that new users are just regular users and not admins. Specifically, we want to test that user initializes with the correct values. First, let's add some logic to our user class. I want to add an initialize method. So I'll do def initialize and I'll create that with an instance variable. So at admin and I'll set that to false. I also need to add an attribute reader so that we can access admin outside of the class. Now let's jump over to the spec file associated to user RB, that's user spec RB. And the first thing we need to do is require the user RB file so that the user constant is defined so that we can actually test user. Now within the describe block, we can add an it block and I'll say it is not an admin. So what we're testing here is that the user is not an admin, i.e. it's initialized with the admin instance variable as false. Inside, we can add the implementation. So the first thing we need to, to do is initialize a user. And I'll assign that to a holder variable to make the test easier to read. And I'll say expect user.admin to equal false. So we're saying on a newly initialized user, check the or call the admin method and expect that to be false. At this point, I can jump over to the terminal and run the tests. And there we go, we have two examples now. So that's the test we wrote at the start of the tutorial and this new test 
they're both passing. Now to verify that, which is always a good idea, I can deliberately break the implementation. So imagine I go ahead and change this to true. Our test is still asserting that um, a, newly, a newly initialized user admin method is false. So when I run the tests, as expected, I get a failure. So this is showing me that the test is uh, behaving as expected and it is testing what it should be testing. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.